So this is the step-by-step -step instructions on how to set up your account for your classroom. First, we're going to download the app, and then once it's downloaded, enter in our first student's name. We're entering in John. His birthday is in 2008. And then we're going to go to parent's name, which is actually the teacher's name. So I'm going to type in Miss Jillian. And then my email, which is Jillian at Miller.org. And we enter it in. And then my password. Make it easy. One, two, three, four, five. Great. We're all done. I'll click Create Account. This could take a few seconds to load as it's registering. And then we're launched directly into the Ignitus Learning Program. And as you can see, it has started right away for John, but we want to go to the right-hand corner and click the Ignitus icon, which brings us to the dashboard, and we're going to then go to the Parent Dashboard. And in this Parents Dashboard, you can see the reports. We can look at the report and progress of each student, the study time that they've been spending. We can see the activity of what they've done and progress over time. We can also look at the curriculum of Ignitus, which if you've not known, we are aligned with the Common Core State Standards. But what we really want to do is go to Settings. In the settings, you can see where it says Children's Account Settings. We want to go ahead and click Add New Child Account. We're going to go ahead and add Lucy as our next student. Her date of birth, again, let's just put her in July 2008. And she's a girl, and we recommend you can use the camera and take the child's picture right there, or go ahead and take the pictures all at once of all your students, and then go from your photo library and select from there. It's much easier and it will save you a ton of time. So go ahead and click Add, and this will ask you, do you want to sync this data? You definitely do, but at this point we want to add more students. So right now we're going to just click Skip. So now we want to go ahead and add another child. Click Add New Child Account. We're going to add our next student. And actually, I'm going to add myself because I want to, as a teacher, play around and I don't want to mess with my student's data. So I'm going to type in Miss Jillian. I don't have to share my date of birth. That is an option. And I am a girl. And I don't have a picture of myself. So if you don't have a picture of yourself, that's OK. Go ahead and just click Add. And we're going to skip. And now you can see we have Miss Jillian. And now that you notice this, uh, there's a new icon for Miss Jillian. And at any time, you can go, if you don't have your students' pictures at this time, go in at a later date, create their accounts, create their profiles, go to your photo library when you have a chance to get their picture, and you're going to select my picture, and our information's updated. So now we're back, and we want to go ahead and click Online Sync at the bottom of the screen. This is really important. This is actually going to back up all your data. So if you have more than five students, 10 students, even up to 30 students, um, this could take up to five minutes. So don't worry, it's, there's nothing wrong. So now we're all synchronized, as you can see. And I want to go now over to the teacher's controls. Excuse me. And so now at the teacher's controls, on the top right-hand corner, you can see where you can switch very easily between different students. And you are able to match each student's skills that they need to work on. So I know Lucy, she knows her shapes and her colors really well. I don't want her working on those. I really want her to focus on her numbers in alphabetical order. She also has a low attention span. So I'm going to take the frequency and say, you know what, I only want her to do this two times before she moves to the next activity. And then if I try to do something in more advanced where I went down to, say, coloring, or actually, no, the counting up to 10, it's going to say the child's not allowed to progress because this game does go at each child's individual pace. I'm going to go back to the top of the screen, and I'm going to select John. And you can see the settings have been reset. And now I'm hitting play, and we're going right into John's first activity. But I really want to have Lucy be the one who's going to use the app right now. So I'm going to say switch profile. 
and I'm going to select Lucy's picture. And there's Lucy's account, and she can go ahead, click on her first game that she wants, and we launch into her very first activity. And as you know, the app will take the child through the learning program at her pace and through the different activities as you designated or as you like to have the app lead itself. Um, now, many people have to share iPads. Many teachers have to share iPads, or you're using it in a learning center or a tech center or a computer lab. So go to Parents Account Settings, and we want to log out. Go to Parents Profile, and you hit Sign Out at the bottom of this page. And we want to make sure we hit Sync and Sign Out before we do that so that all the data of what your students have been working on all day long have been backed up. And when you log back in, the next time, everything has been recovered and the students can pick up where they left off. So those are the steps to setting up Ignitus for your classroom. If you have any other questions, just email us at support at ignitus.com. Thanks.